Welcome everyone to Louisville, Kentucky, and we may be in the bluegrass state, but blue is the color to avoid if you love the homestanding Louisville Cardinals. We have a ranked versus unranked battle coming up here, and you know how chaos can ensue if they start smelling an upset. As we'll see a squad from the ACC, the Pittsburgh Panthers, taking on the 20th ranked team in the land, the Louisville Cardinals. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth, as always, by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Guys, let's tee this one up. Kent lined up for the opening kickoff. And he'll return it and try to get behind his blockers. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. So Louisville's offense will get the first crack at it here. And this wide receiver, he's the linchpin to the offense. They want to make sure they find a multitude of ways to get him to football. And it's a risk-reward scenario on defense when you're trying to cover this guy, Reese, because you play man coverage, you risk him running by you and catching deep balls, you play too much zone, and then he can hurt you after the catch. A lot of different ways that this guy is very dangerous. And when you play defensive end, it's all about getting off the football. You can tell, gets off the football really fast, gets in the backfield, gets the running back before he knows what hit him. What a play by the defensive end. He's going to pass on second down. Caught in the backfield, it's Bell. Push down for the tackle. This quarterback right now is in the groove, and he's doing a nice job in the pre -snip. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. Fairly manageable distance here on third down from the 27. He'll try to pick it up on the ground. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Man, this is a defense that prides themselves on stopping the run, and that is a huge statement on their opponent's opening drive of the game. Third and short, they don't just get a stop. They get a tackle for a loss. That sends a very clear message that they're going to be the more physical side today. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He's got great speed. He'll get it up to about the 44-yard line before they slam the brakes on it. So Pittsburgh's offense will take the field for the first time. One thing to keep an eye on in this game, when they get a back isolated on a linebacker, who wins that matchup? Quarterback likes the matchup, but this linebacker, he's different, man. Not only is he a hitter, he's got the athleticism to cover people, too. Normally you say that. Running toward the tape. Big, big gain on that one as he steps out of bounds with a first down. And you see so many of these plays now in today's football. Wide receiver coming in motion, and the quarterback catches it, just flips it forward. That's a completed pass. Uh, you see the big plays where it just lets him get on the edge really, really quickly. And if he drops the football coming in motion, it's just an incomplete pass. So these plays are getting big plays with really no risk. To the air on first down. Pressure is on the way, and the pressure has arrived, and down he goes at the 30. Just a great job defensively, making him go through his progressions, and he really didn't have time to do it. And that's exactly what you do in zone coverage. You drop in your spots, you read the quarterback's eyes, make sure you take away that quick stuff, and a great job rushing the passer and getting the sack. After the big first down sack for the D, it's second down. On the run, it's Yarnell. Fires deep toward the end zone. Fires into traffic, picked off. Personal foul. Look at the pass, pass, defense. That is a huge break for this offense. Instead of the turnover, roughing the passer, and you've still got the football. Running back searching for a hole. Didn't get a hole out of him. Run, he picked up one or two. Going to work in the red zone. They can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Rod. 
slides to the back. They knock him down after a pickup of four. Ball is at the nine-yard line. I think they called that knowing they weren't going to hit a home run. So why would you call it that? Well, you call it so third down becomes an easier down. It's not third and long where I have to pass the football. Now all options on the table. Boy, they love to move the sticks here and take a shot at it on first and goal. They try to pop a run on the draw. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And you try to sneak this in the right third down. Kind of manageable situation. Not too far, not too short. Or maybe I can throw the football, but I sneak that draw on their defense. Uh, no, sir. I'm ready for that. Stuff some on the third down. They'll try to get something out of this drive and kick the field goal here on fourth down. Never a doubt. And the first points of the day come on that field goal. Well, they're able to get a field goal and put three points up on the board after getting that interception. You would have liked to have seen the offense do a little bit more with that possession and give themselves an opportunity to score a touchdown. But listen, teams will take three points any way they can get it. So after the made field goal, they'll kick it away and rely on their defense. On the move from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Louisville offense is headed back out on the field. Give to the back. Didn't find a lot of room. Let's give him two out to the 20. I'll tell you, this is a running back who's very, very dangerous, and the defense did a good job getting him down there, but they got to do a great job gang tackling because this is a guy that can break tackles and turn those types of plays into home runs. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Trying to make that rush think on the draw play here. At the 35, he's open. A huge gain on that one before he ran out of bounds, and he has the first down. Man, this guy's a playmaker, and he does not need a lot of space. Really nice job that time letting the pass rush get upfield. So when he got the football, there was just green grass out and ahead of him, and he made the defense pay. Uh, and when I got a guy like that, man, I, I just got to find ways to get him past the D-line, right? And then the draw play is a good way to do it. Let them run themselves up the field, and then you can see he's got some serious speed. A lot of speed in space is always a good recipe for offense. They might have the defense's head spinning a little bit now. Hit him with a big run, now they hit him with a big pass. Man, it's so hard to defend both. You know that. Which coverage do I want to put? Do I want to put more people in the box to stop the run? When you've got this kind of balance on offense, the defense can't be right. Off the play fake on first down. The throw. Catch in the middle. It's Brooks. They make the stop, but this passing game does some damage, and they move the sticks with the first down. Guys, that's the end of the quarter, and Pittsburgh has the lead. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. They've switched into the field, and we're ready to get things started here in the second. And the Cardinals will snap it on first and ten. The give to the running back from the shotgun. Operating in the red zone here on second down. The offense showing motion from the tight end, trying to get a read on the D. Leaves it with the back. Mark it off as a six-yard gain down to the six-yard line. It's going to be important this offensive line is able to get a little bit of push. Just got to give this guy an inch, a little crease, and he can make yards for it. Not a lot of ground to cover and not much to defend. A big third down in the red zone. They'll try to get the first through the air. Missed his receiver there. It's incomplete. Got to give the defense credit on that play. Taking everything away, forcing the incompletion. Now it's decision time. Fourth and short, and you're in field goal range. What do you do here? 
And now on fourth down, they'll try a field goal. From the left hash, this one shouldn't be too much trouble. Just drives it between the uprights. And after the three spot, the eyes were all tied up. And we're all square as he's set to kick it away. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. The pit offense back on the field and ready to roll. They'll leave it with him. Picks his way and gets four out to the 27. Nice run there on first down. You know, this is a running back that gets better as the game goes on. So they're going to want to make sure they keep feeding him the football, let him get lathered up. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. To the air. It's Yarnell. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. And on the slant route, I love the location of the throw by the quarterback. He's not making it difficult on his receiver. He's putting the football out in front, hitting his receiver right in the face mask and making it easy for him. They've got a first and 10 at the 34. They go to the draw. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job on the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Hand off from the shotgun. At midfield, he's got room. And perhaps a touchdown saving tackle as he gets him down in the 37. And I bet that running back's eyes got so big. When he gets that handoff going to the right and he sees the huge holes, Yes, please. The defense just didn't flow quickly enough. All of the blockers had leverage on their men. Man, that defensive line has to get off the ball a little bit better, get some penetration to stop that outside run. Looking to go up top on first down. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. We'll take a quick break as we have reached the final two minutes of the first half. Not the most productive half for this offense so far, but finally starting to get it in gear. First and ten. Looking to move it through the air. Gets it out fast. And they pick up just a few on that completion. The man coverage when they get up in your face, they make things hard. You want to be able to attack the whole field and get them leaning in one direction and then break outside like you did there. Nice out route connection. Nice chemistry between quarterback and wide receiver. Pittsburgh trying to put a touchdown on the board in this red zone trip. Motion from the offense. Looking to pass. It's Yarnell. And the defense. They've got him at the 27. And that is your job. O-line has to protect that quarterback. That's the most important position on the field. You got to make sure you keep him upright. You got to do a better job. Seventh play of the drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. He's looking downfield to throw. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free and fourth down is coming up. I'll tell you what, I don't know if the offense was expecting man coverage that time. Third and long in field goal range, you're expecting it to be zone. Instead, they lock him up man-to-man, -man, everybody on an island, and everybody won. They get the incompletion now setting up. And it's no good. And here in the second quarter, we remain all Louisville has 
guys are back on the offense, coming out ready to attack. Always good to get points on a drive, David, but chip shot field goals can leave you a little empty. And I think it's great to get points, but the great teams get touchdowns in the red area. You've got to get out there this time and execute a little better on this drive. You're absolutely right, David. Generally, the best red zone offenses are the ones that run the ball the best. So let's see if they can be a little bit more physical on this drive. The sure hands, it's Bell. The offense calls a timeout to stop the clock. Yeah, this is simple pitch and catch. Quarterback and wide receiver have done this four million times in the offseason. He catches, waits for him to take a couple steps, boom, fires it right on his chest. They can complete this probably with their eyes closed. They've ran this route so many times together. You know, athletic tight ends today are such a premium in college football. Not only can these guys block, but you see this tight end and his ability in the open field, the wiggle that he has to make people miss, don't see that too often. Offense rushing to the line of scrimmage. Clock is stopped for the first down. They'll try to get it off quickly. Looking left. He's got it. The offense burns his third and final timeout of the half. And a really good job by the quarterback being very decisive. He saw his matchup. He went for it. He attacked it. Got the positive gain. I would say he's going to find that guy. Going for it all. That pressure got to him, and he just had to chuck it out of bounds. You hear about shot plays all the time. Offensive coordinators love to take deep shots down the field. They plan them. They plan when they're going to do them, and I bet you we'll plan to see a few more throughout this game. And here comes the offense on second down. After the incompletion, they go back up top. He caught it! Huge game before he goes out of bounds, and now they've got it first and goal. Out routes are very much about timing. That you got it's got to be a quick, decisive movement from the quarterback. As soon as he sticks that foot in the ground, you know he's breaking out. Throw it right now so he can go make you a play. Great pitch, great catch. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. Fires into the end zone. And it's caught! Touchdown, Louisville! And what a nice play call and nice execution. Play action, you're thinking run. Quarterback pulls it out, throws the football right behind those guys, and gets the touchdown. Yeah, it was a nice job there by the quarterback, too, on, on the ball handling. He just froze the defense just long enough to help those wide receivers and targets get some separation in the end zone. And at that point, it was just an easy pitch and catch. Lining up for the PAT. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. kicker. Defense. Defense. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. You get that touchdown right before the half, build the momentum, and the last thing you need to do is mess it up by allowing a big kickoff return. And it'll be a touchback. The ball will come out to the 25-yard line. We are down to 12 seconds to go before halftime. As they take over first and 10, they'll need to move quickly. Let's see if he can find some room behind the left tackle. Still running at the 40. And they finally get him down, but not before. He's got him set up for business at the 49-yard line. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. Dropping back, it's Yarnell. Makes a connection. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. Final seconds of the first half, and they'll try to put up three. The holder will spot it about 35 yards out. Splits the uprights, it's good. And they'll trot off to the locker room after the field goal to close the half. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks, fellas. The end of a fascinating first two quarters of football in Louisville. And I get it. A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down 
and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. And with that, let's send it back to the fellas at Ellen N. Federal Credit Union Stadium. The Cardinals will kick it away first and will start the second half. Here he comes from inside his own five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. The Pittsburgh offense is back on the field. Trying to set the tone with the run. They bring him down and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, he was trying to do it all by himself at the end of the day as a tackle. Uh, I mean, the number of tackles he broke at some point, somebody's got to get blocked to help the guy out a little bit. Man, the defense was like a bunch of zombies on that last play. They just would not stop chasing that ball carrier. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. Quick touch pass to the receiver. Got the first down and more. They've got it to the 49-yard line, and they'll move the chains. This defense really needs to be careful, and they have to play with great eye discipline, understanding where the football is at all times. Moving forward, they have got to know if this guy has the ball because he is dangerous in space. The Panthers want to move quickly. A jet sweep pass inside the 40 and he's brought down after a nice game i love that play call and i love the timing of the pre-snap motion because the quarterback was able to get it to the receiver right behind the offensive line because of the timing he was able to outflank the defense that puts him out in space where he's able to use his speed nice job with the pre-snap motion and timing Caught in the backfield, it's Muffield. Makes a catch and knock down. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second and five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yard situations. They'll run it from the gun. And they try the middle of this stout defense, and they rise to the challenge. That's a really good stop by the defense, Jason. They need a few more. You've given up a bunch of yards on this drive and a bunch of plays, but all that matters is keeping them off the score. Yeah, it's that bend them break mentality you're seeing right now, and this is the point where this defense has just got to lock in. Back to throw. It's Yarnell. Just had to get rid of that one to save the yardage on third down. Well, on third and short in field goal range, they dial up the pass play. Quarterback was trying to get through his progressions. There was just simply nobody open. Couldn't make an accurate enough throw. Ball falls incomplete. Now setting up a big decision here on fourth down. And on fourth down, they'll try to put three on the board. Looks as if this will be a 51-yard attempt. It's good. How nice is it as a head coach to have a kicker like this? It makes these decisions on fourth down so much easier. Just strut them out there and let him stroke it through the uprights. After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. The returner will field it and try to get some field position. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Louisville offense is headed back out on the field. He'll keep it himself. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Really, really nice football play. Man, I got to understand option football. I got to play my responsibility, make sure that I know what I'm doing. And look at the linebacker. Great job doing that. Staying patient, getting to the quarterback, making the big tackle. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. 
He's looking to throw. Catch in the middle. It's Bell. He's really close to that first down marker, but they stop him just a bit short. They'll try to move the chains on third and short from the 27. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. He'll make a play on third down. He's got enough for the first as they mark it at the 32. You wonder now on offense, have they found something in the run game? Finally, it's been tough for them to get the run game going, but they picked up a nice gain on that last one. Let's see if they go back to it. And the Cardinals will line it up on first and ten. He'll do it himself. Pass the sticks and still on his feet. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. Well, you wonder how this guy is so dynamic. It's because of his speed. You simply can't coach that. You saw it on that last carry. The Cardinals are moving quickly down the field. Wide out in motion. They go to the ground. And he's able to shed one tackle, but still, just a very short gain. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. They've been running it, but now the pass. Caught over the middle. It's Brooks. And they'll move the chains with the first down. That might be it for the third quarter. I think most offenses around the country in a situation like this with the lead late would be trying to run the football, right? Or throw it short and try to bleed the clock. But this offense, man, it's still pedal to the metal. They're looking for chunk play opportunities. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. stop there from this senior leader. Now on second down, they want to keep moving forward and keep that clock churning. Takes the handoff. It's Turner. That play just never had a chance. They knock him down for a loss of five. Man, what a play by that defensive lineman. You, you could say he was channeling his inner Pollock. And that's what defensive linemen do. Big, fast, one of the most athletic players on the field, getting in the backfield, just beautiful. You know, you could have shown a little humility there and said, aw, shucks, or something. Aw, shucks, or something. Gets it out quickly. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. And after that completion, it's decision time now for the head coach. Do you kick a field goal, add to your lead, make it more difficult on the opposing offense, or do you trust your quarterback to make one more big completion here and ice the game? So here we are on fourth down, and this field goal kicker is going to face all the pressure in the world. Good, right down the boulevard. So after putting three on the board, the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away. And he's going to bring it out. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The pit offense back on the field and ready to roll. Man, how comforting is it to know that even if your offense stalls out a little, Jesse, that field goal kicker can knock it in from a long way out. Well, he's one of the best in the country, Reese, no doubt. But this offense would like him and prefer for him to kick an extra point on this drive. And to do that, David, they've got to have more rhythm on it. 
Yeah, create some more rhythm, create some more explosive plays, and maybe some more balance. And listen, it's nice to have that weapon and kick long field goals. If you kick too many field goals, you don't get very many Ws. Got it. In the middle, it's Reynolds. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. And that's a really nice route by the wide receiver. Just understanding, I got to win right now. I got to get inside of that guy, and I know I'm going to get contact. You run over the middle of the field on the slant, you're going to get hit. Nice job securing the catch, making the play. Wants to throw on first down. And it just squirted through his hands. He wanted to take off and got too anxious. Well, the receiver did everything right. He ran a good route. He got his head around. He just didn't finish the play. Just look it in. That incompletion leads to second down and ten. On the move, it's Yarnell. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical and pass deep. Let's see what call they have on third and long from the 28. It's a draw. And this one will be stopped for no gain. Yeah, and this offense has to find a way to run the football. And they got to get more creative. Whatever that looks like for this offense, something to jumpstart them because nothing really going on the ground. Yeah, defensively, though, you got to give them credit, too, because they knew that physically they were going to try to be challenged up front. That was a big M.O. for this offense coming into it. But the defense, they've risen to the occasion. Their front seven has dominated this entire game. Got it past the marker. Gets it to the 46-yard line. First down for this offense. We have reached the two-minute warning, and time is of the essence if this offense is going to make a play. And the Panthers are moving quickly down the field. He's looking to throw it. And it's an incomplete pass over the middle. Well, I know it hasn't been a tremendous day statistically for this quarterback, but his decision-making has been good enough to win this game. Hasn't thrown a lot of TD so far, but when things aren't open, he throws it away like on that play right there. He's not putting his team in a bad spot, and that's why they still have a shot to walk out of here with a double. Caught behind the line, it's Johnson. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. And I don't like all they call, guys. Screen pass at this point of the game against the defense playing big zones, prevent trying to keep the ball in front. It's just not going to work. You've got to take shots offensively. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. They're going to throw it again. Finds his man. It's Johnson. And a big-time grab there. Knocked down immediately, but not before he gets it to the 40. Pitt coming to the line after getting another first down. He wants to throw. Got his man quickly. Really confident throw and catch there. Big pickup, and they have a first down. Man, this quarterback is going to have to be deadly accurate here in this two-minute situation, right? And that's really what he's had to be all game long. He hasn't had a lot of yards because the coverage has just been so tight. He's had to be pinpoint perfect. It's been hard just to find completions, no doubt. It's going to be the same thing here in this two-minute drive. Going up top on first down. Throwing right. Got his man. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that one, and they've got enough for the first down. They immediately call timeout, trying to preserve every second they can to try to rally here late. They've moved it into scoring territory, first and ten from the 11. He's got it on the move. That completion will take it close to the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the six. You know, the defense doesn't have an answer for this slot guy right now. They may want to think about bracketing him, having a defender play to the outside and to the inside. Probably some sort of zone coverage where you're trying to get two bodies, forcing the quarterback to have to go somewhere. And it's picked off at the goal line. And the offense makes the tackle in frustration after the interception. Drive comes up empty, and it's a turnover. 
Big time players make big time plays in big time games. Great job by the defense. Not closing the door completely, but stopping the momentum late in the game when you already got a lead. Nice job, D. Linebackers moving, trying to confuse the quarterback. Louisville has it back in the offense, coming out ready to attack. One possession game, getting late, first order of business, just take care of the football. So they call this situation four-minute offense, where you're trying to run the football and throw high percentage passes to maintain possession and bleed the clock. This is a very difficult point of the game to execute at a high level, though. Yeah, and listen, what you understand as an offense is if I get one or two first downs, this ball game's over. And that's your sole objective. Not scoring, take care of the football, get a few first downs, walk out with the dunk. Wow, the running back there showing you his skill set as he's able to rip off that one for a first down. So with the late lead, they're ready to just drain the clock in victory formation. 